started, Jonah. Um, Jonah flees from the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed toward Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up, call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What is your, or what do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord, O oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man for you. O oh Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the man greatly the men greatly feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. So there is a lot here. I mean, we can go about saying when the Lord calls us to do something and we decide not to do it, the many calamities that we can cause, not only for ourselves, but for others. When we don't look at the whole picture, because we only look at things that involve ourselves. So the best thing to do is listen to the Lord when he's asking us, when the Holy Spirit is telling us to do something, to be driven to be, to that yearning, that leading from the Holy Spirit to go ahead and do something, to accomplish something, to set out for something, to make something happen that we have been drawn to do. And many a time and throughout my life, I have argued in my mind, I have decided it's too difficult for me. And on multiple occasions, the Lord forgave forgiven me, but there also was consequences for that. Let's just say a bike accident. <laughs> and so, you know, really, really leaning on the Lord and accepting what he says. Because it's for the better for us. Not just for us, but for the people that surround us or the people that we may affect in their life as well. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, there's another point here, so take note of this, especially when it comes to the New Testament. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. 
So what happens is that is going to be related. Even Jesus himself is going to talk about that. We'll get to the New Testament. So take note of that fact, how the three days and three nights, um, that is key. That is a key that's going to come back up. Um, it's also, uh, there could be things, uh, people have heard, you know, preachers and sermons about uh, renewal, uh, time it takes. Um, and so take note of that um, because when we try to rush things in life, they don't turn out correctly. Things turn out correctly when it's in the Lord's time. And that is something that we can count on. That's true love. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? 